A season opening four game homestand for your Lopes. So far, absolutely no problem. They are three for three on the current homestand at start the Molly Miller era, and they've done it in impressive fashion. And now their toughest matchup to date as the team coming down Interstate 17 from Flagstaff. The Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona University will wind up closing the homestand for your Lopes. Good evening, everybody. Jim Howell along with my partner in crime, Kyle Borg, here at GCU Arena. And Kyle, yes, a perfect 3-0. and And they've had three games that are three wins, but they've had to do them each in drastically different fashion to get the W. Well, in the first game against Weber State, it was start to finish all GCU. Pedal to the metal, ended up winning that game by 20 plus. Game number two against Benedictine, a little bit more of a grind it out complete game. And then we saw on Saturday afternoon, the Loyola Marymount Lions came in and the Lopes were able to run away with a 26 or a 24 to six fourth quarter and ended up winning that one by 20, but that score was a little misleading. And now they've got a three and oh, 3-0 record they're going to put up against a 3-1 and and much improved NAU team and a team that, that boasts eight returners from last year. Yeah, and NAU is just coming off a two-game Big Sky opening sweep at Eastern Washington, which the Lopes will go to next week. But this NAU team kind of mirrors the Lopes on the number side very close. So this game might be a little bit more like that Benedictine game where we're start to finish uh, pretty close for the entirety of this one. Well, and we know that Loyola Marymount's had a size advantage against the Lopes in their last game, and the Lopes were able to battle through that the first three quarters before they wore them out in the fourth quarter. Well, there's a size advantage and then some because more than half of this 15-player roster for NAU is between 5'9 and 6'1, and all of them can also shoot from outside. So this will be interesting. One of these teams is going to get to four wins by the end of the night. We're about to find out who. Let's take it down to center court and our public address announcer for this evening, A.C. Larkin. At guard, a 5'7 junior, number one, Regan Skank. At guard, a 5'7 senior, number 33, JJ Nepal. At guard, a 5'9 senior, number four, Michelle Miles. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for the visiting Lumberjacks, 3-1 and one overall, 2-0 and oh already in Big Sky play. They'll start it off in the backcourt with Reagan Skink, who not only leads them in assists, but also in rebounds, a 5'7 junior from Woodenville, Washington. Joined in the backcourt by their leading sharpshooter so far, Jacqueline J.J. Nakai, a 5'7 senior and a hometown hero from Coconut.
So you have the starting fives for two so very high-powered offenses and pretty strong defenses so far. You've got NAU at three and one and have already begun big sky play with two wins over the weekend against Eastern Washington for the Lopes all non-conference. But now they've got game number four and we know Kyle Borg, this is gonna be their toughest test so far. Exactly, it's gonna be a very tough test. Both these teams pretty similar on the on paper, Jim. We're gonna see how it plays out tonight on the floor, but the Lopes are prepared and they are rearing to go and so are the Havocs. Already making noise and yeah, it hasn't changed. There's still only 250 that are allowed in the house, but they are filling up that decibel range that would also be accompanied by 6,700 of their closest friends on a normal year. We're set to jump it up. It's pinballed around and controlled in the backcourt by Emily Rodebaugh, and NAU will move from right to left across your GCU TV screen. And just like that, J.J. Nakai on the drive, seeing the drive on the right side and getting it to go. It is quickly 2-0 Lumberjacks, and the Lopes will bring it on the attack for the first time this evening. Lada Pieta being picked up way out front by Ring and Skink. Pieta surveying. Now Nydasia Jackson comes out to get the ball outside the three-point arc, and she will fire it over Nakai in and out from three, and it stays out. Comes to the side, and it's saved, but now they say that Taylor Caldwell had her foot on the line when she stepped out of bounds, and that ball was halfway down, Kyle, and just wouldn't stay in for a three. And those are the shots that Coach Miller talks about. When that first one doesn't go down, shake it off and get ready for the next one because that's not going to be the last time Nydasia Jackson is going to have that shot tonight. J.C. Bailey bringing up the ball, all six foot of her. And as we talked about in the pregame, size is an advantage for this Lumberjacks team. But that time, it was Pieta, the point guard on a switch, covering Rodeball underneath. But Rodeball dribbled it off her heel as she tried to drive. So each team with a turnover. And Pieta will come down a minute gone by here in this Wednesday night affair, trying to get the Lopes on the scoreboard. Here's Taylor Caldwell. Caldwell, who was calm, cool, and collected in the win over LMU, offers Scott. She'll drive inside, and the little scoop shot is perfect. And so Katie Scott ties the ball game at two apiece. J.J. Nakai, who is the first Flagstaff native to play for the Lumberjacks in several years, and she came back home to do it. Here's Reagan Skink, drive inside. Fighting with her is Nana Jackson, stayed with her. Good defense, got her to miss the shot. Here comes Caldwell streaking down the right side. Now she puts on the brakes as Skink was right with her. Lob over to the side for shorts. Face the basket, start to drive, double team, moves away from it, right-handed hook too hard. And it's Nakai coming down with the defensive board. Nakai coming straight down the middle, and she'll fire it up from 14. That's off the mark. And it's obvious that the Lumberjacks want to get things started before the Lopes can get into that trapping defense, which has been so effective in their first three games. Katie Scott, top of the key. Beautiful backdoor pass. Nana Jackson will lay it up and in, and Scott put that assist pass right on the money. And a beautiful Scott by, or a beautiful pass by Katie Scott, and a better backdoor cut by Nydasia Jackson, and the Lopes have their first lead. Now Kai around a double screen off for Reagan Skink. Skink cross court, open look, but the three pointers way off off the hands of Mayo, and Caldwell comes down with the board. Lopes four, NAU two. We played two and a half minutes here at GCU Arena. Scott faked the three, start to dribble drive, can't get anywhere. Covered by Rodebaugh closely, give it off for Caldwell and set a screen for. Now on the pick and roll, Scott fumbles, gets it back, give it to Jackson. Jackson's been active offensively, can't get that one to go. Too high off the glass. Nakai on the outlet. Here's Mayo, finds Skank alone. She'll fire a three. That's off the mark at NAU, who's fresh off a nine three-pointer performance in the win over Eastern Washington, is cold from the outside. Jackson, beautiful lob. Caldwell is as surprised as anybody that she was alone and can't get the layup to go. She was expecting resistance, didn't get it, and now on the other end, a defensive breakdown, and Mayo will get an uncontested lay into tie at four. Yeah, and the Lopes are definitely going to have to talk on defense tonight more than they probably have had to all season long. And you saw right there, not enough communication and found them in no man's land and was able to get an easy layup. Caldwell wanted to lob it for Scott, but couldn't find the open spot. So here's Pieta outside the left arc with 10 on the Lopes shot clock. 
Starts to drive, goes right, spins left, has to dish off for Shorts. Shorts moving the lane. She'll spin herself, and this one is beautiful off the glass and in. Kennedy Shorts with her first scoring to give the Lopes the lead back. And now Caldwell going for the inbound steal as the Lopes for one of the first times tonight, four minutes in, a chance to be able to enact that pressure defense that has been so good. And NAU has been able to get the ball in very quickly before the Lopes are able to turn around and set up the press, but now with the dead ball, they'll be able to set it up. Here's Mikiala Mayo, outlet it for Nakai. Nakai covered by Caldwell, keeps on coming, throws it up over Carla Balagay who just checked in. It was an air ball and Mayo was not expecting it to come down into her lap. She fumbles it out of bounds. And so the Lopes being able to force the turnover and they'll come down four minutes in Trying to build on a 6-4 lead. Neither team is led by more than two. Pieta outside the left arc. Goes away from a short screen. Skip pass in the corner. Caldwell can't do anything with it. They swing it around the horn. Here's Pieta. Double team. Finds the open person. Caldwell backs up. Fires a three. No. Shorts gets blocked out. But Nakai, who had the position for a moment, stuck the hip out. Four shorts out of bounds, and that will cost J.J. Nakai her first personal foul and the first foul for either team here in the ballgame. That's a good box out uh, by Kennedy Shorts to get in front on the zone. NAU went to that 3-2 zone on that last possession. The Lopes did a good job of finding the open shot in Taylor Caldwell. So the Lopes reset the shot clock to 20, still on offense, and the lob inside. The double team was already there before it came inside to Scott, and it's stolen away by Ring and Skink. Skink leads in rebounding, assists, and steals on the Lumberjacks, and there's that three-point shot, and it doesn't matter who it is. This time it's six foot. Emily Rodabaugh to give NAU the lead back. And Rodabaugh is a 45, 54 and a half point three point shooter so far early in the season. Balagay was expecting the bump from Rodabaugh. Emily backed off of her and she fell down. That'll be a traveling violation. And Kennedy Shorts got a very quick breather. She will step out of the lineup. And Carla Balagay will check out. And Tiana Brown will make her first appearance in the Lopes lineup. The five foot nine junior from Spanaway, Washington, and one of two Brown sisters on this team. But we have not seen Tiara since game one. She's been battling a hamstring injury. Here is Mayo, drive inside, put it up. Nice shot with the right hand going to the left. And a nice play, make that J.C. Bailey, who gives NAU a 9-6 edge. They've run off the last five points, and we're past the midpoint of this first, first quarter. Brown outside, picked up by Naya Moran, who just checked in. Back for Brown, dribble around Moran, kick it cross court for Jackson. Still 10 seconds to get a shot off. Shorts comes to get it, moving the lane, start left, spin right, off the glass, won't go. Good interior defense by the Jacks to hold their water. And here comes J.C. Bailey. She can play forward, she can play point guard, she can shoot it from three, but that one's a little bit short. And Scott able to box out for the defensive rebound. Back and forth they go. Lopes have not been able to employ their pressure defense very often in this first six minutes. Jackson around a screen. Springs free, comes in, put it up high off the glass. No, she was anticipating the contact and got it. And so Nana will have the first free throws of the ball game for either team, but she will do it after this timeout. Timeout on the floor, 4.03 left to go first quarter. It's NAU 9, GCU 6. Keep it here for more Lopes women's basketball on GCU TV. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. 
Jim Howell, Jack O'Hara back here at GCU Arena. Lumberjacks up by three over your lopes, and it's time for the three keys to the game, brought to you by Sanderson Ford. Kyle, what are they? First key is the controlled track meet, and you have seen it so far. We've already played six minutes, both teams up and down, but the key for the lopes is to control that pace and dictate the tempo of this game. Second key is going to be small ball. We talked about it in the pregame. NAU smaller than the Lopes, and they're all five players on the floor at any given time can shoot the ball from anywhere. And the Lopes have yet to go completely small. We'll see if they end up countering that at some point. Third and finally, make them lumber. No Jacks, NAU against Eastern Washington in the first game that they had over the weekend on Saturday. 50 points in the paint, able to handle Eastern Washington. Well, they come back Sunday, game two. They beat them with nine threes. So the Lopes are going to, it looks like right now, the Lopes are going to let them live and die by the three-point shot and try not to get beat on the inside. And so far, NAU is a bit cold from there. They have made one, but they've also had four attempts. And Jackson uncharacteristically misses both halves of that free of that foul that was called on J.J. Nakai. And by the way, Nakai is on the bench. That's two personals on their second leading score on the season. Reagan Skink, dribble around a screen. She'll hand off Nia Moran, doesn't want the shot. Trying to get it inside, and Jackson makes the steal. And then reaching in in frustration will be Nia Moran. And that will be team foul number three on NAU. Again, Nakai with two personal fouls on the bench. And so the emphasis now goes to people like Nia Moran, who will who are defensively having to match up, maybe not as not with as many tall people as they would have expected. Lauda Pieta, Taylor Caldwell, Tiana Brown. That's the th threesome in the backcourt for GCU with Carla Balagay and Kennedy Shorts in the middle. And the perimeter players playing catch for the moment. Baseline, here's Shorts. Lob out front for Pieta straight away. Thought about the three. Now she'll drive on Skank. Scissors through the defense. Put it up. And they'll wave it off, say that the foul happened before the shot. But that's already team foul number four on the Lumberjacks with 324 left. One more, and they will be out of foul. Or they're already out of fouls. That foul is on the point guard, Reagan Skank. And that will bring Sanjana Ramesh off of the NAU bench, the six-foot sophomore and the only the second Indian player ever to receive a D1 scholarship in women's basketball. Here's Katie Scott, quick inbound, quick shot, quick result. Two for two, Katie Scott from the field, it's 9-8 NAU. J.C. Bailey will bring it out of backcourt, drives on shorts all the way in, crashes into Scott. Scott on the floor looking around saying, who me? And it indeed will be called on the Lopes starting center, and that's one of the things, Kyle, we didn't necessarily cover in the pregame show, but you and I were talking before the game that that's going to be a major concern for Molly Moran. Katie Scott has had some foul trouble in the first three games. She doesn't want to take any chances, and there goes Scott to the bench after just one foul. Absolutely, and this is something we haven't seen uh, in the first three games, the Lopes with the least amount of fouls right now, and here comes Tierra Brown checking in for Katie Scott. Haven't seen her since opening night. She had a preseason hamstring injury that she tried to battle through in game one against Weber State. Played only a couple of minutes, and it tweaked. So she is seeing her first action since then, a 5'10 freshman and, of course, the younger sister of Tiana Brown. Both free throws good that time. And the Lopes with the ball under three minutes, trailing by three at 11-8. Here's Pieta, wants to get more active. Put it up in the free throw line, that's off the mark. Tipping for the rebound, Tiana Brown can't get it. And now Bailey will try and work her way out of backcourt, but a steal. The two Brown sisters combining to force the turnover. Here's Tierra. Cut off, double teamed, out for shorts the trailer. Put, put up from 15, that one won't go. And the Lopes also cold in this first quarter as they have been the last couple of games from the perimeter. Another steal. Tierra Brown to Tiana Brown. And Brown will get the shot to go. Tierra with the steal and Tiana with her first bucket and the Lopes are back within a point. 
And this is why Coach Miller wanted Tierra Brown back for this game. Already two forced turnovers, and she's only been on the floor for about a minute and a half. Quick shot from eight feet. Open look from Mayo, but it's off the left, off to the left. And here's Pieta bringing it down as we near towards the two-minute mark and a chance for the Lopes to take the lead back. We've already had two lead changes in this first eight minutes. And now Brown and Pieta not on the same page. Tiana throws it where Lauda was, and it'll go out of bounds and be a GCU turnover. Emily Rodabaugh checking back in to the NAU lineup. Rodabaugh, who was only ninth on this team in scoring as a sophomore, or as a freshman, excuse me. She's actually their leading scorer in the first three games, averaging over 19 a game. Out front, Reagan Skink being pressured by the midcourt line by Pieta. Can't shake her loose, and now Pieta picks her pocket, goes to the floor. That'll be a held ball, and the possession arrow favors GCU, so Pieta creates the turnover. Once again, Molly Miller continuing to go to the bench early and often, and she gave Tierra Brown a good two-minute test, and Tierra will now go and reassess that hamstring as she checks out for Katie Scott. Pieta playing catch out front with Caldwell. Taylor has not gotten on the board yet. Pieta on the left side, lob for Scott. On the angle left, kick cross court for Caldwell. Fake the shot, drive inside, throw it out front. Tiana Brown open for three, rim around won't go. Shorts battling for the rebound, goes down, can't come up with it. And there is Skink, the point guard, getting the rebound and giving it off for Rotoball. 11-10 NAU, both of these teams used to having big offensive first quarters, but not so far. Skank crashes into Scott, and again, Scott looking at people saying, I didn't move, but Felicity Willis will call a foul, and it's on Taylor Caldwell, which is good news for Molly Moran, and that's only the second team foul of the quarter. So it'll be an on-shooting foul underneath for Miki Alamayo. Mayo looking, and now, wait a minute, before the inbounds pass, fighting through... They're going to get Kennedy Shorts. Yep. Was kind of all over on that cut through the basket, so they're going to get her. Quick inbound on the non-shooting foul, and the Lopes fall asleep inside, and Naya Moran comes away with an easy lay-in. So it's 13-10 NAU, and we're down to the final 48 seconds. Shorts drive on Rotobaugh, but she was a little bit too aggressive, and she picked up the foot before she put the ball on the floor. That will cost her a traveling violation. And you can tell, Kyle, the Lopes are a little tense at the moment. Yeah, just a little bit. A couple back-to-back -back, uh, phantom foul calls, if you will, and then just that travel by uh, Kennedy Shorts, just a little too eager to get to the rim. Skank gets the inbounds pass. Lopes in their trap, but Skank able to get down the right side. Moves to the middle. Nice backdoor cut by Moran. Gets it underneath and has it knocked away. But that time it was the Lumberjacks beating the Lopes down the floor. And Moran will be rewarded with a pair of free throws at the Lumberjacks free throw line with 39.8 seconds left. Foul is on Pieta. So the bad news is four of the five Lopes starters have picked up at least one personal foul. The good news is neither one, of, none of them have picked up more than one as the first free throw by Moran is not good. Moran trying to give NAU the largest lead of the game and can't do it. She misses them both. Both of these teams shoot the free throws very well so far on the season, but both teams 0 for 2. About eight seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock for the Lopes. Tiana Brown dribbling out front. Here's Caldwell. Caldwell wants Shorts to set a screen. She obliges. She shoots over it, but the three-pointer won't go. Rebound down to the lap of Naya Moran. Now NAU can go for the final shot of the quarter. They have 13 seconds to do it, and the shot clock is off. Taking her time as Mayo comes around to screen. Keeps coming all the way. Shot is rejected beautifully by Tiana Brown. And Pieta will lob it off for Caldwell. Can she get it off? No, they will not get the shot off before the final buzzer. But what a play by Tiana Brown to swat that one away and keep this a one-possession game. 
end of one quarter here at GCU Arena in the heart of the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Here's your score. The Northern Arizona University Lumberjacks 13 and your Grand Canyon University Lopes 10. Keep it here for more coverage of Lopes women's basketball on GCU TV. The 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Get the best gear. Go to lopeshops.gcu.edu to find everything GCU from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use promo code GCUTV20 today only to get 20% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Log on and get your gear today. Lumberjacks will start out the second quarter with a basketball, and J.J. Nakai, who spent much of that first quarter on the pine with two personal fouls, is back in there. Out front, Mickey Alamayo working over the top on shorts, puts up the teardrop from 14 feet and gets it to go. Mayo's second scoring, and NAU now with the largest lead of the ball game at 15-10. Lopes have stagnated offensively. They have not been able to get the perimeter shots to go. Shorts trying to change that, puts it up, and that one won't go. Hit the side of the rim and bounds off. Quickly out of backcourt, Skink keeps on coming. Kick from Mayo. She'll put up another shot. That one won't go, and it's tapped to the side, goes out of bounds. Molly Miller has it in her hands, and she can hand off to the referees, confident that her team will get the ball back. Last touch by NAU. And that 13-point NAU first quarter was the fewest points that they have had in a quarter so far this season, and the Lopes is 10 is the lowest that they have had in a quarter so far this season. Lopes only shooting 30%, five out of 16 from the field so far. Here is Caldwell, keeps on firing for three! And that one couldn't have come at a better time! Caldwell able to get the first tray on the docket for the Lopes. Skink comes up, gives it off to the trailer, Bailey. And Skink didn't travel putting on the brakes, but as she gave it to Bailey, Bailey wanted to do the hippity hop to set it up, and she traveled with the ball. So the Lopes forcing the turnover, they'll get the ball back. Lineup of Caldwell, Nydasia Jackson, Katie Scott, Kennedy Shorts, and the lady with the basketball, Lada Pieta. We played a minute here in quarter number two. Jackson outside the left arc. Jackson very active offensively in that first quarter. They'd love to get her back involved after spending the last four minutes of the quarter on the bench. Caldwell playing catch with Jackson. Caldwell seeing daylight, puts up an off-balance shot, won't go, and the rebound comes down to the lap of Mayo. Mayo wants to run again. The Lopes not able to get that trapping defense going, and Mayo able to set up Skink, make that Nakai in the corner, open look, and she will bury the tray, and Nakai is not one that Molly Miller wants to see get on track. Not at all. 50% three-point shooter early on in the season for Nakai, so the Lopes have to find her in transition. Nakai, the former two-time ACCAC Player of the Year, spending two years down in Tucson for Todd Holthouse and Pima Community College. Here's Taylor Caldwell, another three. Rim around won't go. Nakai has the rebound. She'll slow it up. Gives it to the side for Bailey. Bailey. Come around to screen, wants to work one-on-one -on -one with Shorts. Off for Reagan Skink. Skink will back up. Now she's covered by Scott in a switch. They want to try and work it into Rotoball. Can't do it yet. Skink instead will back away, fire a two, and she'll bank it up and in. I don't think she called it, but it counts nevertheless. And NAU now with their largest lead at 20 to 13. Pieta out front, lob for Shorts. Shorts face the hoop. She'll shoot it over Bailey, and Shorts continues to be cold from the perimeter. She'll miss it from about 11 feet. Bailey will bring it out of backcourt. 
Bailey, good ball handler, even though she's at six feet. And that outlet pass knocked away. Stolen by Caldwell. On the break for Pieta. Go to the hoop. Shot won't go. Jackson fighting for the rebound. It goes out of bounds. And the Lopes right now are missing point-blank shots that normally they've made in the first three games. Yeah, and that's something that they're going to need to start hitting here and very soon if they want to keep staying in this one. And we saw against Loyola Marymount the shooting percentage was lower than Loyola Marymount's for the game, but the Lopes were able to hit timely baskets. They were also getting more shot attempts because of the turnovers they were forcing. The turnovers have not been quite as quickly in coming so far in this first 13 minutes. Bailey out front, lob to Rotaball. Coming over is Tierra Brown, who says that's a bad hamstring. Leaps to make the steal. Comes down, the spin, put it up, wave it off. Offensive foul called by Clark Stevens on the far side, and Brown will be whistled for the charge. First team foul on the Lopes. And that waters down what was a beautiful defensive play by Brown on the other end. So the Lopes again struggling to find offense. Brown covering Bailey out near the midcourt line. Off for Nakai. Nakai double team and Caldwell reaches in, makes this deal. Here's Brown again, two on two. She'll go all the way to the hoop, scoop it up and in. And Brown and the Lopes back within five. Bailey as the Lopes starting to press a little bit more and made baskets help create that. Skank gets into the forecourt, off for Rotoball. Rotoball almost travel, give it off to Bailey, now Skank in the corner. Skank covered closely by Lada Pieta. Shot clock at 13. Bailey starts right, spin left, stop. Throw in the corner, here's Nakai. She'll shoot over the top, but the three-pointer won't go. Long rebound to the side, and Bailey reels it in. Gives it to the cutting Nakai, and J.J. took her eye off of it. It will trickle out of bounds, and another NAU turnover, and the Lopes definitely could use that. And the Lopes caught a break on that one after allowing the offensive rebound, but here comes uh, Ven Lavares for the first time this evening, and she's been pretty good in the first half for the Lopes for over the last two games. Lavares, the 5'11 junior from Vanta in Finland. Carla Balagay also back in the lineup. Pieta driving through half the county all the way to the hoop for two. They need more of that from the three-year starting point guard, and the Lopes are back within one possession at 20 to 17. That's the Spaniards' first scoring of the night. Here is Skink. Stop at the elbow, pump it up from 16, get it from 16. Reagan Skink with her second field goal, both of them coming in this second quarter. Jackson quickly to the baseline for Ven Lovatis. Doesn't want the shot, brings it back out front. Lopes with plenty of time as we near the midpoint of this second quarter. Been entertaining so far, glad you're with us. Caldwell for three, that one's short. Lattis swatting for the rebound, can't come up with it. NAU comes the other way, straight down the middle, Olivia Moran. She is one of two twin Moran sisters on this team, Naya being the other one, the Portland, Oregon natives. Make it Riverside, California, excuse me. Inside, Rotobaugh. Rotobaugh tied up by Taylor Caldwell. What a play by TC. Possession error will favor NAU. They will get the ball back when we come back. Time out on the floor, 4.52 left to go here in the first half. It's NAU 22, your lope 17, right here on GCU TV. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. GCU fans, if you haven't already, it's time to download the Lope Nation app. Watch GCU home sporting events directly from your app. Receive personalized news and score updates from your favorite Lopes teams. 
follow the Lopes closer than ever with scores, schedules, stories, and more. And even more perks will be coming very soon. Search GCU Athletics in your phone's app store or download the GCU Athletics app now at gculopes.com slash app. Well, we've talked about it a couple of times, Kyle, about the fact that the difference in the LMU game was the Lopes didn't shoot well, but they got a lot more shot attempts. So far, yes, they've gotten five more shot attempts than NAU, but they're still only shooting 33% from the field, and the Lopes are getting wide open looks, just not able to hit them. Yeah, and that's something that the Lopes are going to need to start doing uh, very quickly. I mean, only down by five, and that's a good look inside for Varis on the baby jump shot against the zone, and that's exactly where the Lopes need to go against the zone, is get a touch on that WAC logo, and they did it on that possession. And it gives them a chance to employ that full court pressure defense. NAU able to get it up court anyway. Skink waits for a rotoball screen, goes to the right side, covered by Balagay in a switch. Here's Nakai, throws it over the top, and Vadas right on the spot with the weak side help, knocks it out of the hands of Rotobaugh, out of bounds, and Molly Miller pleading her case with lead official Lisa Jones. Three-person crew tonight, Lisa Jones, Clark Stevens, and Felicity Willis. They are the ones Manning the calls and the whistles. Here's J.C. Bailey with the ball out front. Ten on the NAU shot clock. Kick in the corner. Nakai, an open look. The three-pointer won't go. And it's Balagay swooping in to get the defensive rebound. Lopes trail by three. They've trailed most of this first half. Caldwell, drive all the way inside. Throw it out front. But on the pass off, a pushing foul. That's only the first team foul called on NAU so far in this second quarter. And it'll be an on-shooting foul. Caldwell will inbound it to the right of her own bucket. Here's Vadas quickly in for Balagay. Rodabaugh thinking about the steal, but thought about it a half a step too late. Reached in, picked up the foul. So just like that, two quick team fouls on NAU, one on Mayo and one on Rotoball. Balagay will check out. Katie Scott comes back in. She'll handle the inbounding duties. Does so to Taylor Caldwell. Skank in her face. Gets it inside for Scott. Muscle up a shot. Won't go. A lot of contact. No call. Goes out of bounds and the Lopes will keep the basketball and that's kind of a break. Tierra Brown testing that hamstring and so far so good. This is her third time coming in off the bench for Molly Miller. And she'll replace Vin Lavares. Here's Brown in the drive. Puts up the shot just a little bit short. Bailey with good defense brings down the board. Lopes have struggled to be able to drain that open shot when they've had it. Here's Mayo. Puts it up over Scott. Tried the bank shot. No. Katie with the rebound. Outlet it for Nydeja for Jackson. Comes down the right side. Stutter step. Drive on Skink. Put it up off the bat. And she'll score it. She'll foul count it send her to the free throw line and nana continuing to be aggressive despite the fact that she's only two of four from the field great take on the fast break by nana jackson to get to the line and she kept her eyes on the rim the whole time and that's what really benefited her and that made her able to hit that layup after the contact reagan skink the guilty party on the foul that is her second and Jackson trying to tie it, and it rims around again and won't go. So Nana, uncharacteristically 0 for 3 from the charity stripe. And NAU has the basketball clinging to a one-point lead. They've led by as many as seven. Here is Naya Moran. Fake the three, start to drive, sees daylight, comes in, puts it up off the glass and gets it, despite the fact that T.R. Brown almost got a block shot. Here's Taylor Caldwell. Wants somebody to come to her, but instead gets it on the baseline. Tiara Brown will back it out. Thought about the three, gives it to her sister, Tiana. Here's Nana Jackson, starting to work one-on-one. -on -one. Puts it up, high arching shot, won't go. Down into the lap with the rebound of J.C. Bailey. NAU holding on to this one possession lead, and another turnover, that is turnover number 12 here in the first half for NAU, as Bailey and Mayo not on the same page. Katie Scott back into the lineup along with Lada Pieta. And the Sisters Brown will get a much-deserved breather and getting high fives from Molly Moran as they head to the bench. So the Lopes lineup is Pieta, Kennedy Shorts, Nana Jackson, Katie Scott, and Taylor Caldwell. Pieta calls out a set play as she crosses the midcourt line. 
Waits for Jackson to come get it. Jackson thought about driving instead. Comes around to Scott's screen. Now she's got a more open lane. Can't get the shot to go. Shorts underneath will follow. That one won't go, but a whistle on the shot will send Kennedy Shorts to the free throw line. And Shorts, even though she's one of six from the field, has been working really hard on the offensive glass. Yes. Foul called on Bailey, and that's all. And just like that, in the span of two and a half minutes, NAU has committed four team fouls. Shorts gets the friendly roll on the first free throw, and she'll have a chance to cut this deficit to one. Yeah, and Kennedy Shorts, like you mentioned, putting herself in good positions to at least get a hand on an offensive rebound. And she's got one already, coming off an 11 rebound performance on Saturday afternoon against the Lions. So we'll see if she can, she's got two right now, but she is working very hard down low. And that's what they like to see out of Kennedy Shorts. That was a new career high in rebounds for the Long Beach native. Her previous high, five. And we expect that Shorts is gonna be close to double doubles much of this season. Here's Nakai, covered by Tiara Brown, keeps on coming. Brown stayed with her, and give Nakai credit, threw it over the outstretched arms of Brown, got it to go. That's her third field goal. Nearing the two-minute mark in the corner. Jackson, now as it poked away, gets it back. Better get rid of it in a hurry, and now throws it away. Was afraid there was going to be a five-second call. Instead, throws it to the Lumberjacks. Rodebaugh comes down, gives it off for Bailey, and the two bigs at six feet, both thinking three-pointers, but both pass them up. Here's Nakai working on Caldwell. Now for Bailey, she won't pass that up, and she'll get it to go from three-point range. J.C. Bailey now with seven points, and that lead, which was down to a single point, is back up to six for NAU at 29-22. Final 90 seconds of this entertaining first half. Here's a skip pass in the corner. Caldwell to Pieta. Pieta drives, stop, throws it inside, and a walk called. Pieta taking the extra step. She was getting contact, and I think she thought if she could take that extra step, she'd draw the foul, but no dice. And instead is their seventh turnover of the evening. Lopes will now go into the full court press, looking and waiting as Mayo. Naya Moran comes to get the basketball. Off for Nakai, and the Lopes will back out of it. Nakai being pressured by Pieta. Once, twice, knocks it away. Now Lada goes down, and a 10-second call as the Lumberjacks unable to get it out of backcourt, and credit Lada Pieta for being relentless on the NAU shooting guard. And she got her hand on a couple in there, forced it loose a little bit, and NAU had no help back against the one the one man, Laura Piera, pressure. So Pieta will bring it on the attack with a minute eight left to go before the half. And the Lopes are gonna have some things to work on in that halftime locker room. Pieta in the corner for Scott. She'll pump up the three, no. Rebound, Nakai comes in, steals it away from everybody. And now she starts to drive, loses the basketball. Brown and Caldwell combining for the steal. It's Caldwell putting up the shot, won't go. And a tie up on the rebound between Rodebaugh and Brown. It'll send it the other way. Lopes, no field goals in the last 242, so no scoring from the floor in almost three minutes now for GCU. And NAU has hit three of their last three shots, but has also turned the ball over on their last two possessions. And I'm actually a little surprised. I thought the possession arrow belonged to GCU, but apparently not. So NAU still with the basketball. In the final 45 seconds, Mayo drive around Pieta, and now Pieta will be called for the little push in the back. And that's two personal fouls on Lauda. That's only the second team foul on Grand Canyon. Pieta becomes the first one to hit the two foul plateau and Molly, Moran, or Molly Miller's gonna make sure she doesn't hit three. She'll check out and Anna Jackson will take her spot and cover the inbounds pass to Miki Alamayo. Mayo looks, waits, better hurry. Looking, wants somebody to come get it. Finally, she gets it to Nakai, way out on the perimeter. Go to the right, nothing there. Keeps working in, now for Mayo. Hook pass inside for Rotoball. Turnaround shot won't go. Foul is on Kennedy Shorts, and that will send Rotoball to the line as Shorts trying to, wasn't quite sure whether or not she wanted to block it or try and steal it, and didn't keep the arms all the way vertical. Yeah, and on that one, 
you stayed in great position to force her to back to the baseline. You just got to stay as vertical as possible and just you don't necessarily need to go for a block or a steal on that one. Rodabaugh, one of the better free throw shooters on this team at 84%, puts up the first free throw and good. Rodabaugh averaging 19 a game so far in their first four games, but has only one field goal. And the two free throws give her five points, but they also give NAU their largest lead of the half. Lopes can pretty much go for the final shot of the half. There's a half second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And that's what Caldwell apparently wants to do. Now 17, now 16, and she's not being pressured by Mayo, so she can take as much time off as she wants. Clock down to 10 as she goes to the left side. Picked up by Moran. Here's Scott. Start to spin. Move in the lane. Scoop it up and get it. Design play, and it worked to perfection. Two seconds, one second, and they won't get a shot off, and that's the way the first 20 minutes of play is going to end. But the NAU Lumberjacks threatening to undo a perfect 3-0 homestand. By the Lopes, they lead most of this first 20 minutes, and they will head into the halftime locker room up by six. We hope you'll stick around for the halftime show, which commences after this. It is halftime here at GCU Arena in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. It's the NAU Lumberjacks 31. Your GCU Lopes 25. Keep it here for more Lopes women's basketball right here on GCU TV. While you explore our country, let Community Tire Pros be part of your journey. We're here to give everyone something to look forward to. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. When you have the urge to play outside, Tire Pros wants to get you there. Offering convenience, selection, and our national roadside assistance. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We made USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance has made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. My favorite other sport is football. My favorite shoe brand is Nikes. I wear mostly Nikes. My favorite TV show is Criminal Minds or How to Get Away with Murder. My off-court talent, I can juggle. <laughs> My favorite artist right now would probably be Little Baby. Yes, pineapple, definitely go on pizza. My most used emoji is the laughing emoji. A shot I'll take to win the game of course will be a deep three. The moment I decided to see you be the move when Coach Miller became the coach.
Yeah, Tiara Brown, a great spark. That first two minutes she played, she came in, forced two straight turnovers. And Coach Miller has been very good about managing how often she's on the floor. She's played almost 10 total minutes of the first half and has scored even a couple of baskets for the Loaves. And she got the first basket of her career out of the way. And a couple of big steals. So she is one of the reasons they've hung around. They're not shooting well, and NAU is shooting 50% from the field. That's why the Lumberjacks have a 31-25 lead here at the break. And we've now met Tiara Brown. Let's go ahead and meet somebody else on the other side of this break. We'll have our Lopes insider, Paul Coro, as he talks to Nana, that is Nydasia Jackson. Again, we're at halftime, 31-25. NAU on top of your Lopes, and we'll be back with more on GCU-TV. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Hi, Lope Nation. We're back to introduce you to another new GCU basketball player, Nydasia Jackson, who transfers here from Youngstown State. She's an Oakland native, and everybody around here already knows her as Nana. How are you liking it so far at GCU? It's been pretty cool. It's pretty hot, for sure. Um, we just working out and getting our work online done. So it's just been hanging out with my teammates and it's been pretty chill so far. As a graduate transfer, you've got a lot of Division One experience to compare and contrast. What do you, strikes you that's going to be different about your time here? Um, just being a leader, just stepping in that leader role and uh, just camaraderie with my teammates and the coaches and just being having a fun season. Molly Miller, your coach, was also a point guard growing up. Kind of seems like you guys might have had some similar games. You're kind of a spunky player, get after it defensively. Do you connect with her on that level? Oh yeah, especially her energy. Her, uh, her energy is very uh, enthusiastic, and we can we relate on different types of level as point guards too. So it's great to look up to her and you know learn a lot of different stuff about from her. You fill the box score in a lot of different ways. How would you describe your game to people who haven't seen you play yet? Uh, I'm a defense first type of per person. Um, <laughs> I believe that defense starts my offense, so um, I do the little things, so the little things help the team, and that's how I fill up the box score. Either way it goes, I'm just a team player. That'll earn some minutes with your coach for sure. What do you think about the style that she wants to implement? That talk about defense, you're going to get after it 94 feet. It's very different. Uh, I believe it's fast and just getting after it. Um, we have to do a lot of hustle and a lot of trapping, so it's very up-tempo, and I'm just ready to get into it and lock in. You get complimented a lot for your court IQ, but you're smart off the court. You got your business degree, 365 GPA. What do you want to do with your graduate work here? Um, I'm just get starting to my uh, leadership degree and, uh, and master's degree. I um, want to start my own business as far as uh, entrepreneurship and getting started into that world and learning different things on how to build that level of uh, leadership within an organization and outside. I imagine that applies to the team too because coach talked about bringing you for some instant experience and leadership and maturity. What do you see as your role like that with the team? As you said, being a leader and they can look up to me and it's like it's a new start, new start for everybody. So if I can just lead the team and just be that example for the team, that's where I want to begin with. Are you more the 
work your butt off work ethic kind of leader or are you are you a vocal one who's going to jump on some people when they need it i'm a little bit both i have a great work ethic so i want to lead by example first off and if my teammates are slacking off or need a little help i am going to use my voice to like push them through it or need a little advice i'll just be there for them Coach Miller talked about that work ethic that you mentioned before and that you've already sort of been getting after it here because it's really important to you, uh, what you do with your final year. Can you describe that feeling about going into your last season and what it means to you? I just want to finish with a bang. It's my last season, and I'm fortunate enough to have another opportunity to finish strong, and she gave me another opportunity to come in and play and uh, lead this team. So I started my work ethic and just building upon it and just being ready when the season starts. Everybody's calling you Nana. Where'd that come from? It's always been with me. Uh, my name's probably difficult to, for people to stick with. So uh, my mom and my family called me that from a young age, and I just stuck with it. And it's been short and simple, and I just ran with it. All right, Nana. Well, we appreciate you letting Lopes fans get to know you, and we look forward to seeing you at GCU Arena this fall. It is amazing how much they mature in just the fourth game. That. That Lopes Insider interview from Paul Cora was actually done before the season, but you can tell how much Nana has matured, and she was an integral part of the success of the first half. She has four points, and she's two of six from the field, but she had several drives that could have very easily fallen in, and you know Molly Miller's hoping that that will start happening in this second half. Well, it's time to take a look at the upcoming schedule, and it's brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. And as we start getting down towards closer to the holiday, those number of home games start kind of dwindling, Kyle. Yeah, I was just about to say, final two men's, or final two of three men's basketball home games before the semester is out. Friday night's gonna be a big test for the Lopes. Nevada comes to town. And then, of course, on Sunday afternoon, it's a Sunday matinee against the team from Tempe. The Arizona State Sun Devils make their first trip to GCU Arena as since the Lopes have transitioned to a member of Division I back all the way seven, eight years ago now. And then, of course, they'll play uh, Sagu Indian American University on Tuesday the 15th as the women will hit the road this weekend at Southern Utah and then Eastern Washington. Next game at home for Molly Miller and crew will actually be across the way. It'll be on Saturday afternoon, December the 19th. Fall commencement will be happening here at GC Arena, so we will bring you that game from Antelope Gymnasium, the Lopes old home. At a one o'clock start, we'll be on the air with our pregame show here on GCU TV starting at 12.55. Again, that is Saturday, December 19th. We're gonna come back with the halftime stats and second half action. Should be a good one. Hope you'll stick around 31-25. Lopes Trail, Northern Arizona, right here on GCU TV. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt-free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. Teams making their final warm-ups as they are back out on the floor getting ready for the second half, which means it's now time for a look at the Copper State Halftime Stats, and it's brought to you by Copper State Credit Union, the way insurance should be. And once again, Jack, the Lopes having to battle that cold shooting from the perimeter. Yeah, that cold shooting, 13%, just the one make from Taylor Caldwell, 38% for the Lumberjacks, but the really big number is the rebounds and the free throws. Lumberjacks have only missed two. The Lopes have missed three. But if the Lopes hit a couple of more, they're, you know, a couple points closer. And if they're five for five, they're only down by one point at the half. But the rebounds are the other big part. The Lopes have been able to get hands on the basketball underneath, but they just haven't been able to quite come down with it yet. And this was something that we asked Molly Miller 
at length about yesterday. You know, they have they have had 27, 28, and 28 forced turnovers in their first three games. And, of course, those are new marks for an NCAA D1 era for the Lopes women's basketball team. She wasn't really sure whether or not that was going to be a successful so far in this game, but so far so good. The Lopes have created seven or have committed seven miscues themselves, seven turnovers, but they have doubled that output. They have forced 14 NAU turnovers. The problem is they have not been able to really capitalize on those points off the turnovers, and that's one of the reasons they're still looking up at the scoreboard. Yeah, the points off the turnovers, the layups just haven't been falling for the Lopes after that. They're getting the looks underneath They're the layups, and most of the layups, they are pretty contested by this lumberjack defense. And you got to expect here in the second half, the Lopes, they're going to get that to fall here in the second half and really put more pressure on the Lumberjacks. You mentioned the 14 turnovers and just the four, or the 14 points or eight points off the turnovers for the Lopes, rather. But that number will go up because the Lopes, they're just going to keep forcing turnovers. And at some point, you got to think you get more turnovers more often than not, you're the team that comes out on top. And you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Of course, they had those 12 three-pointers that were able to kind of stake their claim against Loyola Marymount the other day. And that poor shooting overall from the field was masked by the fact that they hit those 12 trays. Not so much tonight. Against NAU, they're only one out of eight from three-point range. If those start to fall, this is a whole different ballgame. Absolutely, and you got to think, you know, the Lopes are going to keep shooting the three. You don't completely abandon it, but you, maybe you take a few less unless they start falling. And you mentioned the 12 against Loyola Marymount and the poor shooting percentage. Well, the threes are what made the difference and what gave the Lopes and kept the Lopes in the lead until they were able to really wear down Loyola Marymount. But I don't see the Lumberjacks wearing down completely like Loyola Marymount did. Second half underway, Lopes with the basketball, and they trail by six. Nana Jackson alone in the corner for three, and that's a perfect way to get half number two underway as the Lopes cut that six-point deficit in half with one shot. Nikki Alla, Mayo brings it out of backcourt. Jackson went for the steal, almost came up with it. Now they come back five on four. Nakai faked the three, drive, throw it cross court for Reagan Skink. Wanted to get it inside for Rotoball, who's being covered in a switch by Lada Pieta. Double team. Who's she going to get it to? Mayo running the baseline. Turnaround jumper. That one won't go. Scott, perfect position for the defensive rebound. Here come the Lopes trailing by three. They've trailed by as many as eight. They have never led by more than two points themselves. Here's Shorts. On the right side, can't find an open shot. Gets it to the cutting, Caldwell. Put it up, oh, wouldn't go. Another layup at point blank range that won't fall. Caldwell coming down, tries to get the steal, can't do it. Bailey to Rodabaugh, straight away for three, got it. Emily Rodabaugh, that's her spot, and she has hit the tray twice from the top of the key, and it's 34-28, NAU withstanding the initial first minute rally. And what's surprising, and that's only Emily Rodabaugh's second made field goal of the night. Here is Caldwell, she'll pump it up. That one, line drive shot, rolls around and off. Bailey comes out of the pack with it. Bounce pass to the cutting Mayo, and it goes off of Mayo. Caldwell had the steal. It pinballed around on her, on her hands, and then as it was going out of bounds, it hit the wrist of Mayo, so the Lopes catch a break. So Lauda Pieta, Taylor Caldwell, Nana Jackson, Katie Scott, and Kennedy Shorts. That's the five on the floor now. That's the five on the floor that started the game for Molly Miller. Here's Scott. Off for Jackson. Jackson picked up by Mayo, picks up the dribble. Gives it for Pieta on the left side. Backs it out with 10 on the shot clock. Waits for a Scott screen. She'll fire a 15-footer, roll around and off. And those are the rolls that the Lopes have not been able to get in the first 22 minutes. Nakai alone. Open look, three-pointer, air ball. And the rebound scramble is a held ball. Possession arrow favors NAU as Maya and Jackson had it go right down into their laps. Well, Molly Miller, knowing that she doesn't want her team to, to be bashful, still giving them the green light, even though the shots aren't falling. But the shots are falling on the other end. J.C. Bailey and Emily Rodabaugh, their two best three-point shooters, showing why. And suddenly, it's a nine-point NAU bulge. Shorts inside. Put up the shot. It won't go. And Bailey held her ground for the defensive play. She also gets the rebound. Now, Pieta knocks it away in backcourt. Off for Skink. Skink. 
Scissors through the defenders, coming straight down. Nice pass to the cutting Nakai. She'll put it up and in, and once they couldn't get the backcourt steal, bad things happen, and now Pieta and Caldwell not on the same page. Lotta was not looking up, and Molly Miller wants a very quick timeout. Seven minutes, 17 seconds left to go, third quarter. We will keep it here. It's a 30-second timeout for the Lopes, but suddenly they are staring at their first double-digit deficit of the ball game, and NAU starting to look more confident in breaking the Lopes press. Absolutely. They're, they're sending help back. They have two or three players in the backcourt ready to break the press at any given time, and they're doing it by dribble penetration through the press. Now, the Lopes, they're right there. You just saw Laura Piera poke that last one loose, just couldn't quite, no one was there to get on the floor and get it. But the Lopes, the press is going to keep working for them, and they're going to keep forcing those turnovers. It's the shots once they get the ball back on them. The offensive end and the roll just isn't there for him so far here tonight. Well, and we know that Molly Miller's bread and butter is that pressure defense and that transition. It's not like they are going to deviate away from it because they realize that this is truly a war of attrition and they figure if they have the fresher legs in the fourth quarter as they have in the first three games, that that will pay off. The problem is they cannot get too far behind before the fourth quarter actually hits. Absolutely, and NAU, an 8-0 run basketball, it's a game of runs, and NAU is on one right now. It's how, how well can you withstand the run, and, how, and when can you get on your own run, at what point do you get on your own run, and how well the other team handles that as well. Bend but don't break is going to be the mindset here for the Lopes going forward. Jackson began the second half with a three-pointer for the Lopes. That was only their second made in nine attempts. But since then, NAU has run off eight unanswered points, and they'll have the ball after the turnover. It'll be Mayo inbounding it right in front of Molly Miller in the Lopes bench with 7.17 left. Again, the Lopes have only led twice in the ball game, and that was all the way back at 4-2 and 6-4. But they have cut it to one several times. Here is Skank racing down the right side as the Lopes go into the trap, and Skank just fumbles it off of her knee, out of bounds. She was looking inside as Bailey had sprung free, but the Lopes had the double team, which got Skank a little bit ahead of herself. Let's see if the Lopes can use the turnover. That's turnover number 16 for NAU here on the night. Vieta waits for a screen. Give it for Caldwell. They're trying to work it into Katie Scott. They go cross court for Jackson. Work it inside, all the way in. Scoop shot, won't go. Scott finds a way to tip it to herself. She'll drive in, she'll put it up, she'll put it in. And it looked like Katie was running in slow motion, but she actually was waiting for the defense to figure out what they were gonna do before she moved. Katie Scott now with eight points on four field goals. Here's more trapping defense out by the midcourt line, and Caldwell and Pieta almost forced another steal. Instead, Mayo will inbound it just on the NAU side of midcourt. Gets it for Rotabaugh, picked up by Scott. And they have cleared out the lane to see if they can possibly drive inside. Mayo, handoff for Skink. Gets it inside, nice pick and roll to Rotobaugh. Goes up for the shot, won't go. It's knocked down hard. Tierra Brown, who checked in during that last stop in play, says that one's on me, and the referees agree. That's the second personal foul of the night on the freshman. That'll send Rotobaugh to the line where she's two for two. Well, the Lopes did show some better rotation on that defense as Rotobaugh has the first free throw roll off. And if they can start getting some of that and start maybe confusing the offensive flow of NAU, then good things have usually happened early in this season when it goes. Rotoball makes one of two, back to a 10-point lead by the visitors. NAU's only loss was to the seventh-ranked team in the nation down in Tucson, U of A, and they had the lead for the first two and a half quarters. Scott on the drive. Has it knocked out of her hands, but that will mean free throw time for the pride of Carl Junction, Missouri. Foul is called on Rotobaugh. Three of the five starters for head coach Lori Payne, now with two personals each. The crowd goes deathly silent, but Scott's first free throw is not good, and the Lopes only two of five from the charity stripe. But part of that is not just the fact that they missed three, Kyle, it's the fact that they haven't gotten them, they haven't created that many opportunities. 
That's right, they haven't been able to get to the rim. That zone has really kind of put a stop to the Lopes penetration game that they've had in the first couple of games. As Katie Scott checks out, and here goes a very small lineup for the Lopes. This is the first time we're seeing this type of a lineup this season. So let's see, Vadas replaces Scott. She covers J.C. Bailey. They sneak inside. Mayo keeping with it, but all kinds of white jerseys around her. Forces the miss. There's the lead pass. Brown to Jackson, and the shot won't go. Rebound tipped around, and it comes to Bailey. And then Vadas comes from behind and makes the steal. Great play. Here is Tiara Brown. Spins. Put an off-balance jumper up. Won't go. Vadas takes the rebound away from Nakai. Inside for Jackson, back for Vadas, knocked away. She gets it back, rough and ragged here at GCU Arena in the last couple of minutes, and if that's what works for the Lopes, so be it. Pieta on the drive, shot won't go, and the rebound scramble. Jackson and Vadas both coming across the lane to try and get that ball. But the foul is going to be called on Emily Rodabaugh, and that's good news for the Lopes as the NAU starting center just picked up her third personal. And I think that's going to be a big key as we get later into this one. It's going to be the foul trouble of NAU because their five starters make up the bulk of their scoring as the bench doesn't average a whole lot of points after you get past uh, Naya Moran. Well, and we mentioned that they have eight returners coming back from last year's squad. The interesting about that thing about that is Pieta makes both free throws. Three of their top four scorers from a year ago have not seen the floor yet in 2021. And now as Mayo gets it out of backcourt, she's bumped and fouled, and that will cost Tierra Brown her third personal foul. She is the first lope to reach that plateau with 5.21 left. So each team with two team fouls as we near the midpoint of this third quarter. Mayo waiting to inbound, but Felicity Willis underneath says, hold the phone. And Brown has now picked up her fourth. So three personal fouls called on the Lopes freshman in a span of two and a half minutes. And Molly Miller is going to have to send her to the bench, and she'll bring in Big Sis. Tiana Brown replacing Tierra Brown. But the way Tierra has been playing, that is a big loss as Brown's going to have to sit for a while. Inbound to Nakai, back to Rotabaugh. Here's Nakai, drive in, puts up the little running one-hander, won't go. Caldwell with the rebound. Taylor has only one field goal so far. That came in the second quarter, but she's been doing a lot of the little things. She has five rebounds. Here's Pieta out front. Wants to work one-on-one on Nakai. She'll start right, spin left, put up the teardrop, and it still won't go. Tough break for the Spaniard. Skank out of backcourt. Pieta's getting the shot she normally hits. She just has not been able to find the roll. Mayo playing point guard out front. Dribble drive on Caldwell. Stop the dribble. Still plenty of time to get a shot off for Northern Arizona. Bailey dribbling out front, drives on Vadas. Crash into Pieta, and that'll be a pushing foul called, not on Pieta, but on Ven Lovatis. Pieta saying, wait a minute. She crashed into me, but they are saying that Vadas, with a little push in the back, helped create the contact. And that is four team fouls on the Lopes. One more, and they will put NAU in the bonus. Four minutes, 36 seconds left to go in the third quarter as we step away. It's NAU 40. The Lopes 33 right here on GCU-TV. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> when life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Are you looking for the right place to help advance your education? GCU has all the right tools and programs to help you find your purpose. For more information on what Grand Canyon has to offer or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. 
Perfect time to think about that. The spring semester begins on January the 4th. Next week is finals week here at Grand Canyon, and then they'll get a couple of weeks to recharge their batteries, spend some time with loved ones, and come back. And the first week is virtual. The first set of in-class instruction begins January 11th. So contact GCU today. So the foul was called on Vadas before the timeout. So J.C. Bailey will head to the line for a pair, and the first line drive shot is good. She's a perfect three for three from there, and she tries to make this a nine-point game again if she can bury them both. Free throw good. Bailey in her fifth year, the redshirt senior. Now it's the Lopes being able to beat them down the floor, but Jackson was double teamed underneath. Here's Katie Scott, the trailer, off for Caldwell. Taylor right now not even looking for her outside shot. Start the dribble going, come around to Scott's screen. Off for Vada. she'll fire up a three. That's high off the arc, not good, but the long rebound comes down to the hands of Tiana Brown. Fresh 20 on the shot clock for GCU. 4.09 left to go third quarter. From the free throw line, Scott, that one's short. Caldwell or Brown keeping it alive, tips it to herself. Gives it in the corner. Vadas for three! Oh, they needed that one. Then Lovatis with her second field goal. And the lady who was a three-point sharpshooter her first two years as a lope has changed up her game. But if she can get hot from the arc, you know Molly Miller is going to say feed her the ball. Bailey trying to answer, and that's an air ball from three-point range. She had the open look but couldn't get that one to fall. And now the Lopes have a chance to possibly make this a one-possession game for the first time in a while. And you know what? It seems like the past few minutes, every time this building gets a little bit of life in them, NAU gets a little rattled a little bit on the offensive end. And you saw the three by Varis, everybody's up on their feet still, and it gets a little bit louder when the Lopes start to go on a run. And you saw it affect that shot on that last possession. Pieta in the front court, takes a glance at her head coach as Molly Miller directs traffic with the action happening in front of her bench. Tiana Brown to Scott who comes out to get the ball. Throw it in the corner. Jackson for three, that one won't go. Scott trying to tip it to herself, knocked away. Here's Skink, comes down with Brown to beat. She'll put it up and that one won't go. Made her change the shot and Scott comes in and gets the rebound from her knees. Outlet it to Brown, it's a two on one. Tiana off to Pieta, oh, wouldn't go. There's not many more things Pieta can do to get that ball to drop. Here's Moran, crashes into Katie Scott, and that's an easy call. Offensive foul, Moran to send it the other way. And you know what? Katie Scott making up for an unfortunate bounce that you cannot do anything about if you're the Lopes. It was a beautifully executed two on one. The backboard just decided that, you know, the ball wasn't gonna go in that time, but Katie Scott gonna give the Lopes that extra possession by taking that charge. And that is a heady play from the freshman and I'm sure everybody in GCU Women's Basketball East in Springfield, Missouri, and the state of Missouri cheering on that one as Scott with the defensive gem. Here's Jackson out front. Lob in for Scott. Can she do an offensive gem? She'll put up the shot and get it, but it will not count as lead official Lisa Jones says the foul happened before. Holding foul. And that's only three team fouls on NAU, so it'll be a non-shooting foul. The foul is on Nakai. That is her third personal foul, but that's the first one she's committed since the first quarter. So each team out of fouls for the remaining 241. Pieta will inbound it to the right of her own basket. Fresh 20 on the Lopes shot clock. She looks, she waits. Gets it for Vada. Square and fire, three-pointer no. Rebound. Boxing out is Bailey. Took it away from Katie Scott. So NAU dodges a bullet. Bailey comes down, open look. Passes it up instead. She'll give it off for J.J. Nakai. Here's Skank outside. Fake the three, nice head fake. Drives inside, scoop shot. That one won't go. Now she can relate to the pain that Lada Pieta's been feeling. Here's Caldwell in the front court. To Jackson, all by her lonesome for three! Defensive breakdown for NAU, and Caldwell did a good job of finding her fellow shooting guard to get that tray. 
Pressure defense, Skink streaking out of right, out of backcourt. They find the open person. Bailey puts it up for three. That one won't go. She's missed her last two. Scott outlets it for Jackson. Comes down, put up the shot. No, fights, gets her own rebound, follows. That one won't go. Rodeball gets the rebound. And again, the Lopes with shots at point blank range and can't get them to fall. Nakai, drive around Vadas, draw the defense. Skank open look for three, got it. Well, they're not bashful, even though they missed their last three-point attempt. Skank had the open look and had the green light from her four-year head coach, Lori Payne. Back to a six-point NAU edge. Pieta sees daylight, drives, shot won't go. Fights gets her own rebound. They get it back out front with a fresh shot clock. Scott covered by Skank and a switch. Inside, beautiful lob pass over the top for Vadas. Scott the assist, and Vadas with five of her seven points here in the third quarter. Things starting to click for the Lopes offensively now. Trying to work it inside when the outside shots are not going. We're inside of a minute, and the NAU lead is four. Nakai wants to work around a screen. Sees daylight, keeps coming. She'll put it up off the glass and in. And smartly, the Lopes did not try to swat at it and force maybe a three-point play as Nakai had the first step all by her lonesome. Jackson holding the ball out front. Wants to work it in, but Moran denying her. Now she gets the first step. Moran makes up the ground, and she'll put up the shot. It won't go. And finally, a lot of contact in that entire exchange between Jackson and Moran. They will finally call personal foul number three on Naya, and that will finally put NAU over the team foul limit, but with only a half a minute left. So Jackson, who has had a bit of an adventure at the free throw line, Normally, she's a 75% free throw shooter, but she has missed all three of her attempts. She'll go back to the line for a pair. Trying to cut this to four. Lopes have been as close as three a couple of times in this third quarter, and they have trailed by as many as 11. First free throw by Jackson, good. And that, I'm sure, will bring a sigh of relief to the Oakland native. Jackson, who played at Providence College and at Youngstown State, still, even though a grad student, with one more year of eligibility, and oh, is Molly Miller happy she does. She'll check out after she makes both free throws, and this is the first time we've seen Kennedy short since early in the third quarter. Pressures the inbounds pass, and Kennedy, with that fresh energy, able to force an extra timeout as Mayo had to call the timeout to avoid the five-second call. And you saw as soon as she was calling that timeout, Coach Miller's running down the sideline begging for that five-second call. She's gotten one already this season, and it's it's got to be pretty close every time the Lopes p- apply that pressure. But we know that the referees, it, no different than the 40-second clock in the NFL, they're going to let it go to about 41 right. before they call a delay of game. It's Same thing six here. Six or seven seconds. That's right. That's right. So they're going to give them the benefit of the doubt and then some. So still 27.9 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Again, the Lopes have not led since early in the ball game. They've hung around, and they have been able to make some some inroads in the latter half of this third quarter. Now they're going to change up their pressure as Shorts is playing off the ball. Here's Nakai, and she'll inch it out of backcourt. Again, the shot clock is off. Nakai gets around a screen. Now she sees daylight, but she's cut off by Tiana Brown. Give it out for Bailey, and Bailey says, let's go for one shot. They still have a dozen seconds to get it off. Caldwell, make that Tiana Brown, giving Nakai some room. Nakai on the drive. She'll put up the off-balance shot. Won't go, but Nakai applauding the call of lead official Lisa Jones, who will send Nakai to the free throw line. I believe that was called on Tiana. I think you're right. The foul is on Tiana Brown. That is her first. And Nakai, who is one of their better free throw shooters. In fact, she has not missed yet in 2020, 2021. The former member of the Pima Aztecs during her Juco days. And then she spent last year at the University of Nevada. Makes them both. And the shot put up, partially blocked by Rodabaugh as Caldwell tried to beat the buzzer, and that will do it for three 
quarters of play. Ten minutes left in this season opening homestand. Can the Lopes come back? It's NAU 49, GCU 43. Keep it here for more exciting Lopes women's basketball on GCU TV. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. With Cal Borg. Jim Howe back here to help close out this season opening four game homestand and the Lopes trailing by six as they begin this fourth quarter. And Kyle Borg, we even talked about it, that it seemed like the Lopes outplayed NAU in that second, in that last 10 minutes, but each team wound up scoring 18 points. Yeah, and the offense really started to click for the Lopes in that quarter. The defense has been there all night for the most part. Let's see if they can put both together and get some stops on the defensive end. Beautiful play, Katie Scott had the shot, but Mayo came over from the weak side and provided the defensive help, got the block, then went coast to coast, missed a layup of her own. So each team comes up empty in their initial offensive sets. Lopes have trailed for most of the first three quarters. They've never led by more than two. NAU's largest lead, 11. Here is Lauda Pieta being pressured by Skink. Comes around to Katie Scott screen, lobs it over the top, it gets to Katie, she'll put it up, she'll put it in, and Emily Rodabaugh has to be careful. She's playing with three personal fouls and was swatting at the ball. Lopes trying to force the steal and do! Kennedy Shorts and Tiana Brown pressuring Nakai. Nakai tried to go underneath with the bounce pass and it landed on the line in front of Mayo. So Scott will inbound it and that one poked away from Caldwell. She'll retrieve it. Lobs for Scott, double teamed. Who's open? Pieta, drive in, spin, stop, throw a no look pass in the opposite corner. Caldwell finds Skatey Scott. Doesn't want the shot. Give it to Pieta, who will for three, won't go. Scott fights for the rebound. Takes it away from two six footers and scores. Katie Scott, and this is around the time. It's Katie time, starting to warm up. The first two field goals of the fourth quarter. It's a two point game. Here is Mayo, poked away, saved in the corner. Pieta throws it off Mayo. And now the referees confer GCU basketball. And here come the Lopes. And Laura Piera got poked the ball loose, got on the floor, and was able to throw it off of NAU before her back touched out of bounds. And I'm not really sure she needed to dive. She had room if she could have corralled it on her own. But nevertheless, the Lopes will have it in their front court. Caldwell looks, Pieta comes out to get it. Had an open look, instead she'll drive. Almost travel, and yes she did. Pieta put the brakes on, but not enough to stop that extra pivot foot. And the turnover will give it back to Northern Arizona. But the first 90 seconds, you have certainly seen a momentum swing. Now the Lopes have to try and keep it that way. Kennedy Shorts will cover the inbounds pass. And the Lopes starting to get that press to work. Inbound for Rotoball. Back to Skink. Almost travel. Comes down one on three. She'll stop, fake the shot, give it to the trailer, Nakai. And the Lopes are back defensively. 49 47. NAU holding on to a two point, eight, two point lead. That one knocked away by Tiana Brown. Here's Skink. Double team, goes all the way underneath. Give it to Bailey in the corner, the three-pointer that won't go, but the rebound tipped around, kept alive for Mayo, and it rolls off the back of the iron. Corralled by Pieta in the corner. Lopes come down with a chance to tie. Two minutes gone by, fourth quarter. Fasten the seat belts for the remainder of this one. 
Here's Tierra Brown, four fouls and all. She'll back up, high arching three, that one won't go. Short's able to knock the rebound off of J.C. Bailey, and it'll stay on this side of the floor. Tierra Brown, great defense on the defensive end on that last possession, did good job not to foul and pick up that fifth as the Lopes are gonna want her activity on the defensive end for the next 747. Pieta and Shorts will check out in the lineup. Nana Jackson and Tiana Brown check back in. Caldwell will inbound in the corner as Jackson comes to get it. Back for Caldwell. They'd love for TC to start getting involved offensively. Jackson, lob in for Scott. Start left, spin right, and the shot is perfect. Katie Scott, 15 points, nine of them coming after halftime. We're tied for the first time since it was four apiece. Brown going for the steal, slaps it off the knee of Mayo. Another turnover as the Lopes were going out of bounds. And you know what, Jim, we were talking about it. Every time this crowd gets into it, it just gives the Lopes a whole new energy in this crowd right now. All 250 Havocs, they are into it right now as we got a tie game and the Lopes with the possession. The Lopes now have forced 21 turnovers. They're trying to work it into Scott again. Why wouldn't you? Double team, trying to move away from it. Start left, spin right, hook shot. Got it! Oh, what a shot! Didn't even look like she was looking at the basket. And for the first time since it was 6-4, to four, the Lopes have the lead, but they only have it for a couple of minutes as Skink able to go coast to coast to tie it at 51. Caldwell over the top, this time it's Brown, goes away from the double team and scores. Tierra Brown, her second field goal to give the Lopes the lead back. And now forcing another turnover, or did she? They're gonna keep it with NAU, but it was very, very close right there in front of the Lopes bench. The Lopes have put the clamps on in this first 3.09, and that's why they have the lead. Mayo will try and inbound it in front of the GCU bench. Jackson will not cover the inbound. And they throw it right into the lap of Taylor Caldwell. Possession arrow, though, favors NAU as it was a hell ball as Mayo was able to grab it. So they'll get it back again with another opportunity to try and get it inbound. They do so this time to Rota Ball. Now the Lopes have to back off. Caldwell chasing the ball. Knocked away. Pieta almost came up with a steal. And now this time Skink will hit it off of Caldwell, who was diving to try and secure that steal. That's a, this is exactly the fourth quarter we are wanted to see from the Lopes and the exact defense that Molly Miller loves to see from her teams. Nakai comes to get the inbounds pass. Still 15 to get a shot off. She'll fake, she'll drive. Kick for Skink. Stop at the free throw line. Here's Bailey, picked up by Kennedy Shorts. Comes to the top of the key, driving on Caldwell. And she traveled with the ball. And did they call it? No, they call a pushing foul. Looked like Bailey took the extra step. But instead, they're going to say that Lauda Pieta pushed her before the infraction. And that is Pieta's third personal foul. So NAU dodging bullets all over the place. They've now had the ball for 35 seconds and haven't been able to get a shot up. Nakai will inbound on the baseline. Looking, waiting. Fires it out front. Open look, Skink. Passes it up, give it to Mayo. Put it up from 15, in and out. And it's Taylor Caldwell skying for the rebound. Lopes come down, trying to extend the lead past two. They have not been able to do that tonight. Nana Jackson outside the arc. They give it for Shorts, moving in on Rotobaugh. The little short one-hander is good. Kennedy Shorts finally able to find the range. Only her second field goal. 55-51, GCU. We played four minutes. Rotobaugh coming down the left side. They have numbers on this side. Bailey open look, three-pointer no. She's missed her last four from three-point range. Tierra Brown coming out of backcourt. She'll stop, slow it up. NAU back defensively, and the Lopes now with a four-point edge. They give it back to the Lopes floor general. That's Lauda Pieta. Wants Shorts to come out and set a screen. Instead, lob over the top. Here's Brown. The spin, the shot, no! Wouldn't go, and Mayo held her ground defensively. Bailey will bring it out of backcourt. NAU has gone cold. They have just two points here in this first four minutes plus. 
Bailey scrambling around, trying to shed Caldwell. Off from Mayo. Bumps into Pieta. No harm, no foul. Give it to Nakai. Open look. Three-pointer. In and out. Stays out. Rebound to the side. Pieta kept it alive. Jackson reels it in. Nana will now slow it up for Taylor Caldwell. We are at the midpoint of this fourth quarter, and it's gone from can the Lopes come back to the to can the Lopes hang on. Caldwell taking her time. Brown comes out at the high post to get it. Wants to work one-on-one on Nakai. Has it knocked away. Brown goes for the steal, comes up empty. Outlet pass, Jackson able to stop it. It goes out of bounds. Skink threw a forearm into the back of Jackson. Nobody saw it. Nana is slow to get up. And it'll be NAU ball in the corner. When we come back, time to take a breather. 439 left to go in this thriller. Don't you go anywhere. It's GCU 55, NAU 51 on GCU TV. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. When you have the urge to play outside, Tire Pros wants to get you there. Offering convenience, selection, and our national roadside assistance. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. While you explore our country, let Community Tire Pros be part of your journey. We're here to give everyone something to look forward to. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. Jim Howe, Kyle Borg in the booth and plenty of great sights and sounds being brought to you by Elizabeth Elizabeth Esparza, Hannah Longshin, Diana Johnson, and our producer director, Jack O'Hara with an assist from the boss at GCU TV, Al Porteous. They are bringing you the sights and sounds and we are so thankful that you're with us. And we still have 439 left, Kyle Borg. And the Lopes have turned a six point third quarter deficit into a four point lead thanks to outscoring the NAU Lumberjacks in this first five minutes, 12 to two. Absolutely, and we can revisit our Sanderson Ford three keys to the game really fast. The Lopes, this second half, they've controlled the track meet. They went small for a portion of that third quarter and it really turned the tide of this game. And then the Lopes have made them work in this second half for every shot in every made basket. And we're starting to see maybe some of that fatigue. Nakai had an open look from 15, couldn't get it to go. And remember JC Bailey, who's one of their best three point shooters is 0 for 4 since she made her first attempt in the second half. Here's the Lopes trying to build on this four-point edge. Caldwell springs free, scoops it off the glass and in, and Taylor Caldwell gives them a six-point edge. It is the Lopes' biggest. Rodabaugh scrambling to get it in, gets it for Nia Moran. Now they have numbers. It's a three-on-two, but Moran wants to back it out. Under four minutes left to go, and the Lopes have held NAU to one single basket in this fourth quarter. Here's Bailey to the cutting road of ball. Crash into Taylor Caldwell. Wave it off. Personal foul number four, Emily Rodeball, as TC takes the charge. Great help defense from TC on the strong side. And now here comes Katie Scott. And if I'm the Lopes, I'm going right at whoever Emily Rodeball is guarding just to try and get her out of this game. Pieta, Vadas, Scott, Jackson and Tiana Brown, the five on the floor for the purple and white. 3.38 to go, and now it's the Lopes chance to maybe use a little clock to their advantage. Scott way out front, kick in the corner for Jackson, drive the baseline, split in the lane, come back out. Still 11 to get a shot off. In the corner, Pieta. The lob for Scott. Turn, put it up, no, get her own rebound, follow and score. And Katie Scott again in the fourth quarter, having it all her own way. She's got 19 points. Skank. Weaving through half the county, and now the push as she crosses midcourt will stop play, and that's personal foul number four on the Lopes starting point guard, Lada Pieta. That's only the second team foul on GCU in the first seven minutes. NAU with just one. 
So Moran will inbound it, but first Molly Miller wants to go to her bench. Pieta will go out with those four fouls, and Katie Scott's going to get a very quick breather. Moran looking, waiting, inbounds for Rotoball. Back to the cutting, Moran crashes into Vadas, no harm, no foul. Off for Skink to Moran, who sprung free. Open look, three-pointer, no. And Kennedy shorts with a rebound. Quick outlet for Brown, but Brown sees that NAU's back defensively and knows that for the moment, the Lopes have the clock on their side as we're inside of three minutes. Vadas round the arc for Taylor Caldwell. Works around Avada's screen. Sees daylight, spin, puts it up. Oh, rolls off. The iron won't go. Rebound tracked down in the corner by Megan Skink. Dribbles around Caldwell. Now time starting to work against the Lumberjacks. Tried to get it to the cutting Moran, and Naya wasn't quite there yet. And yet another turnover. That is turnover number 23 for the Lumberjacks. Back into the lineup. Scott and Pieta. Shorts and Tiana Brown getting high fives as they walk past their first year head coach Molly Miller who's trying to keep this perfect perfect record intact as the Lopes head coach. Again, the Lopes have outscored NAU 16 to two. Scott, turn around from 15, no. Maybe rush that shot just a bit. J.C. Bailey comes down the left side, 2.20 to go. And the Lopes have turned this around in the fourth quarter for the second straight game. Skank covered by Scott in a switch. Now drives as Vada picks her up. Off for Nakai. Nakai's been quiet. Dribble drive and now a foul called. Are they going to call a kicking violation? No. They call a foul and it's called on Nana Jackson. Just her first. Just her first and only the third team foul for Grand Canyon. So Mayo has to inbound it on the side. Tried for the inbound steal by Tiana Brown. Couldn't get it. Nakai controls. We are at two minutes left to go. Nakai springs free, goes to the hoop. It's too hard off the glass. And Shorts again doing a great job of limiting the Lumberjacks to just one shot. It'll be a loose ball foul called on Mickey Alamayo. That is her first. And the Lopes will have the basketball. Once again, Tiana Brown and Kennedy Shorts Lauded for their defense, congratulated as they go to the bench, and Scott and Pieta back on the floor for GCU. They break the press easily as Caldwell gets into the front court. Now they can use some clock, and Molly Miller says, let's spread it out. Nakai pressuring Caldwell as she yo-yos the basketball out front. Here's Pieta on the right side. Pieta off for Jackson. Jackson almost hippity-hopped and traveled but instead backs it out. Shot clock at eight, now seven. Start to drive, lose the basketball. Comes out front, Vadas had it, Nakai steals it. Nakai comes down, one on two, crashes into Vadas, blocking foul. Shot did not go, Nakai is frustrated. And the foul is on Vadas. That is team foul number four on the Lopes with a minute 26 left. And Nakai, who has no points, in this fourth quarter, which has been her time to shine in the first four games for NAU, needs both of these free throws to make it a two-possession game and won't get the first. And, you know, that's good defense from Ven Lavaris on that fast break. Thought she might get the call with a little bit of a lowered shoulder from Nakai. And you know what? The big thing we were talking about earlier was will this NAU team kind of wear down? Not as much so as Loyola Marymount as she misses both free throws. But the five starters all have 30-plus minutes logged so far for this Lumberjack team. And we've seen open looks that were automatic in the first two and a half quarters are not automatic for NAU here. And Skank now forced to foul. She fouls Pieta out front. And right now, they have fouls to give. So Lori Payne, the four-year head coach, will bring in Naya Moran as well as Olivia Moran, the two twin sisters from Riverside as they're going to have to start using fouls, it appears. Now they'll foul Katie Scott. Foul is on Mayo. That is her second. And so both teams out of fouls now. Still a minute 12 and an eight-point Lopes lead. Pieta looking, waiting. Gets it for Scott. They don't want to hurry. Pieta will bring it out front. Here's Caldwell, 14 to get a shot off, minute five left. Beautiful lob pass, there's Scott. She'll drop it in. 
Katie Scott with 21 points, and it's a 10-point Lopes lead. Time out Northern Arizona. Exactly 60 seconds remaining in regulation. The Lopes, who trailed ever since it was 6-4, to four, have outscored NAU and totally put the clamps down 18-2 in this first nine minutes of play. What a defensive effort by this Lopes squad. And that is exactly what the Lopes hang their hat on, is the defense and the fact that they can ramp it up at any given moment. And you talked about it, two points given up so far. And NAU hasn't scored in the last 6.09, and the Lopes have had over the last 14 or so minutes, dating back to the third quarter, a couple of different 8-0 runs and are currently on a 10-0 run. And we talked about that at the beginning of the third quarter was the game of runs and the Lopes have hit their runs at the perfect time. So Lori Payne diagramming a play in the NAU huddle. And J.C. Bailey will inbound it just to the left of her head coach. Payne, who has done a whale of a job in her first three years plus. And now they're going to say that they're going to have to inbound it from backcourt, I do believe. But the referees are going to confer as Payne wanted to use as little clock as possible. Payne, who has led them to seven wins her first year, then 13 two years ago, and 16 a year ago, and led them to a semifinals berth in the Big Sky Tournament for the first time in forever. And it was a really good team. They have not, they were selected to finish third in the coaches and media poll this year because of the work that Coach Payne has done, and that's the highest they've been picked. They haven't been picked to finish higher than eighth since 2011. But right now, the referee's just going back on that last play to see if the ball was dribbled at all. Because if it was in the women's game, you cannot advance the ball once you take a dribble. Want to remind you, this is the end of a four-game homestand for the Lopes women. But the Lopes men are back on the floor after having a game canceled due to COVID protocol with their with the Prairie View A&M team. Now they're going to be back on the floor this Friday. They will take on the Wolfpack from Reno, the Nevada Wolfpack. It'll be a Friday 7 p.m. tip-off. You can catch that game on TV, courtesy of Barry Butel, Scott Williams, and Kate Longworth with the 6.30 p.m. pregame show Friday night, 7 p.m. tip-off on Fox 10 Extra. That is Channel 45 here in the Phoenix area. You can also catch it on radio starting at 6.45 Friday night with the radio voice of your Lopes, Michael Potter, along with Lopes insider Paul Coro. Again, that's this Friday night, the beginning of a two-game homestand, Nevada on Friday night, and then Sunday afternoon, the ASU Sun Devils coming across town. And you know what? The road for either of these two teams doesn't exactly get easier after tonight. The Lopes have to go on the road to Southern Utah, who came into the GCU Arena last season and took down the Lopes. And then NAU, by the time their next two conference matchups against the two teams that were picked to finish first and second, Idaho and Idaho State. And they actually begin that first two-game set against Idaho on New Year's Eve night. All right. Timeout over. Bailey gets it to Rotoball. Off her hands. Has to go down to the floor to get it. Possession arrow favors GCU. And Taylor Caldwell will tie her up. So give it back to the Lopes with 55.9 seconds remaining. And NAU starting to run out of time and run out of possessions. So Scott will inbound to Pieta. Now she's got to play keep away. And the foul will be called on Mayo in the backcourt, which will finally put the Lumberjacks over the team foul limit. So both teams will make the long trip down to the Lopes free throw line with 54.4 seconds remaining on the clock. Pieta at the line, the first free throw is not good. Pieta two for three from the stripe. Just a 54% free throw shooter on her career over the last couple of seasons. So Pieta trying to extend the largest lead of the game for GCU, which she does. 62-51, she will step out of the lineup. And NAU is going to call a timeout with 54.4 seconds remaining. It's a 30-second timeout again. We will keep it here. We mentioned, we mentioned that the Lopes men's team back home for two. The next home game for your Lopes women's team after they go to Southern Utah 
over the weekend and then up to Eastern Washington on Monday. They'll be back here a week from Saturday. That'll be Saturday afternoon, December the 19th, and we'll be across the way, still on the GCU campus, but at Antelope Gym, which used to be the main home of the Lopes basketball teams. 1 p.m. start as they'll take on Houston Baptist again. That's a week from Saturday. We'll be on the air at 12.55 with the pregame show. Maya will inbound it right in front of her own bench if she can. Lobs it inside. Bailey gets it. She'll put it up and in. Only the second field goal of this fourth quarter for NAU. And Molly Miller seeing that the Lopes struggled a bit to get it in. She will call a 30-second timeout of her own. So looking at the timeouts, GCU still has two left. NAU has one full with 51.7 seconds on the clock. And now they're going to say a full timeout. So we will step aside, I do believe. No, Felicity Willis called a 30. So we'll keep it here. 51.7 seconds remaining. NAU on the verge of falling to three and two and seeing their modest two game win streak snapped when it was all going their way for the first three quarters. And for the Lopes, Molly Miller still trying to keep that incredible home court streak intact. Again, we want to thank our great crew Hannah Longshin, Elizabeth Esparza, Diana Johnson, Jack O'Hara, and Al Porteous. We also want to remind you, two integral parts of the Lopes social media machine, handling all the duties for the GCU women's basketball, Twitter and Instagram, Montana Lambden and Marley Thompson. And you can go to it right now, at GCU underscore WBB. So a nine point lead. That's what the Lopes are trying to protect. Katie Scott will inbound it. Does so to Taylor Caldwell, and a quick foul from Nia Moran will send TC to the line. That is four fouls on Moran. Caldwell, who has not been to the line tonight, trying to further ice this one down. As it's pretty obvious, Lori Payne not calling off the dogs despite the fact that her team has just not been able to find the range in this last 10 minutes. First free throw is good as the crowd goes deathly hushed. So Caldwell making sure her teammates are set before she puts up the next free throw, which is off the front of the iron, not good. So now NAU has to hurry, trailing by four possessions. Nakai drives in, back for Mayo. She'll put up a three and get it. Mikaela Mayo with her first scoring of the second half. It's a seven point game and Caldwell will be fouled by Bailey in the backcourt. Bailey's definitely the one on the floor for Lori Payne to foul. She has all five of her fouls to give. The foul trouble elsewhere. You've got Rodabaugh and Naya Moran with four each and Nakai and Mayo with three each. So Caldwell right back to the line with 39.5 seconds remaining. And the first free throw, good. Caldwell trying to extend it to a nine point game and does. Three of four free throw shooting. 65 56. Maya now throwing length of the floor, and Bailey's down there. She's out in front of Varus, and she'll put it up and in. 16 points for Bailey, inbound to Brown, fouled immediately by Megan Skank, or Reagan Skank, and that is four fouls on the NAU point guard, and here we go back to the other side of the floor. Well, this game is definitely not over. It's still a seven-point game, but we've talked about all game long how the Lumberjacks have great interior people since they have a size advantage over just about anybody they play, but a lot of those bigs like Bailey and Rodebach can shoot the three and they've shown it tonight. So here's Tiana Brown who has not been to the line yet this evening and the first free throw rolls off not good. Lopes have not been automatic tonight from the free throw line. They're now 11 of 18. Brown's next one, good. Eight-point game, full court pressure. Bailey sneaks out, but Shorts waits with her. Here is Skank, 
Dribbling all the way down. She'll force up the shot. Blocked beautifully by Caldwell. Controlled by Shorts. Half a minute left to go. And it looks like the Lopes are going to go 4-0 to start off 2021. Caldwell will be fouled on the pass off with 22 seconds remaining. Foul is on Bailey. That is her second. But time running out on the visiting Lumberjacks who had things all their own way in the first 30 minutes. Short's first free throw, not good. And I think we can figure out, Kyle Borg, what Molly Miller is going to have them working on tomorrow in practice. Probably some free throws. I'd <laughs> say so. Both free throws missed. Still an eight-point game. But Mayo's got to hurry. Off for Rotaball. Rotaball, dribble drive, spin, knocked away. Pieta's got it, and that is a Perfect cherry on the Sunday for the Lopes, who will be able to hold on to it. All Pieta's got to do is cross midcourt, which she does. Two seconds, one second. The Lopes battle back after trailing for all but the first minute and a half of the ball game, trailing by as many as 11 points, and then for the second straight game, putting the clamps down on their opponents in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter, and they outscore NAU in that final 10 minutes, 23 to nine, and they turn a six point third quarter deficit into an eight point victory at 66-58. Kyle, you had been calling for it the whole game. We just gotta wait until the fourth quarter, and there was a lot of unsure moments in getting there, but once the fourth quarter came down, that last 10 minutes belonged to the purple and white. Yeah, that fourth quarter was huge for the Lopes. They did a good job to get it pretty quickly tied up to start that fourth quarter. But the fourth quarter, we've been saying it for the last few games, Jim. It's uh, it's Katie Scott time. She had 12 points in that fourth quarter, six and nine shooting, and had another great game for her, 21 on the night. And she winds up with a double-double, her second as a Lope with 21 points and 10 boards. So I guess, you know what? I guess we just have to give her the player of the game again, don't we? We, You know, you, you try and give it to somebody else every now and then, but when you just have somebody that's been as dominant as Katie Scott, and you know what? Earlier this week, when the WAC Players of the Week came out and she was just an honorable mention, I was a little shocked by that. <laughs> if I'm being 100% honest, Jim, I thought she should have been WAC Player of the Week last week for her two performances, but you know what? Maybe this week coming up, but a great game for the Lopes. They forced a ton of turnovers yet again, 25. 25. The bigger stat was they had just four turnovers in that second half. Yeah, they, they took care of the basketball. They were able to clamp down. And even then, in the third quarter, it seemed like even when they would make steals, they would get layups on the other end, and they just wouldn't fall. But l give credit to Molly Miller's bunch. Even though yeah. it's a young team still trying to gel, they didn't get down, they didn't hang their heads, and they stayed with the program when they could get the opportunities. And finally, when the shots started falling on one end and wouldn't fall on the Lumberjack side, the Lopes realized that the tide was turning, and they did it again because they had a huge discrepancy against Loyola Marymount where they put up 34 more shot attempts than the Lions did. Well, you look at the discrepancy again. The Lopes get outshot. They only shot 37% from the field as opposed to 41% from NAU, but the difference is the Lopes get 50, or give up 51 shot attempts. They put up 68 of their own, and they're able to compensate despite the fact they were only four of 17 from three-point range. Absolutely, and those four threes, three of them were very timely. It was almost like and they, they got out to a pretty large lead there at the end of the second quarter going into the start of the third, but the Lobes, they weathered the storm. Mm -hmm. They stayed within themselves. They did exactly what they were supposed to do, and they ended up with the victory like Coach Miller would have liked, and they came out the way it, they thought it would, but a great game, and it was the toughest test that the Lopes have had so far this season. 21 points, 10 rebounds for our player of the game, Katie Scott. A dozen points for Nana Jackson. Nobody else in double figures for the Lopes, but you saw a ton of balance in Taylor Caldwell. Eight points and another great game, doing a lot of the little things. Seven rebounds, four assists, and so therefore you see a lot of the little things that the team is doing, and that's exactly what Molly Miller prescribes. She says she's not worried about the starting five, and she knows her players aren't because she she 
basically stresses, if you're in the rotation, you're going to get in the game. You'll earn your minutes. You'll have the chance. And it's not who starts the game, who finishes. It's who finishes the game. And you saw the rotations continuing in that fourth quarter with the fresher legs, and NAU had no answer. And fresh legs is really what's going to help, especially in this style of play. If you face a team that's not willing to go 9 to 10 deep, that's going to hurt you in the long run. In the Lopes, they're willing to go 10, maybe even 11 deep. And you mentioned the balance scoring. Everybody but Balagay scored tonight. At least um, three points was the lowest total from Tiana Brown. But you mentioned Taylor Caldwell. She's a stat sheet stuffer if she's not scoring the basketball at a high rate. She's getting rebounds. She's dishing out assists. And another great defensive game for her. Seven steals, Loyola Marymount. Four here tonight. Want a quick reminder that this Friday, the lights come back out back up here at GCU Arena as Bryce Drew's team tries to go 4-0 under the first-year head coach. They'll take on the Wolfpack from Nevada. It's a 7 p.m. tip-off here at GCU Arena. If you can't be among that select few that comes into the arena, you can join us courtesy of Barry Butel, Scott Williams, and Kate Longworth with Fox 10 Extra. That's Channel 45 here in the Phoenix area. And that starts at 7 p.m. and the pregame show at 6.30. And you can also catch it on radio with the radio voice of your Lopes, Michael Potter, along with Lopes insider Paul Coral, starting at 6.45 on 1580 AM, The Fanatic. You can also catch it at 99.3 FM, as well as 95.9 FM. That's this Friday from GCU Arena. Lopes next game for the women at home will be a week from Saturday, that's December 19th, across the way at Antelope Gym, 1 p.m. with the tip-off against Houston Baptist. We'll be on the air here on GCU TV starting at 12.55. Want to once again thank our great crew, that is Jack O'Hara overseeing it with Diana Johnson, Elizabeth Esparza, Hannah Longshin, and Al Porteous. And we also, of course, want to thank my partner in crime, Kyle Borg, another great performance, and thanks for being along the ride with me. So. You can remember that you can follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Don't forget to download the Lope Nation app so you can watch all the live streams from your mobile device or subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. So until we talk to you a week from Saturday, on behalf of my partner in crime, Kyle Borg, this is Jim Howe speaking to you from a rocking and rolling GCU arena in a thriller. The final score, your GCU Lope 66, the NAU Lumberjacks 58. Good night, everybody, and go Lopes.